Hi, everyone. Welcome to Beacons of Balance. I'm Arlene, one of the hosts, my beautiful other co host, Joanne, and the lowest step, and you will introduce her shortly. Um, if it's your first time coming to Beacons of Balance, welcome. It's all about being in balance because we world, we live in this world of chaos and duality. So what we bring to you on each episode are some little pearls of wisdom to bring each of us back into balance, to live our best life possible, to help to self-empower each other and to lift each other up in the light. So that's what it's all about. And we have a wonderful show for you today. It's very exciting, very fun, and it's all about self-empowerment. So I want to introduce to you Stephanie May Sojong is, she's a professional photographer and owner of La, I want to say a French way, La Photographie Boudoir, Photograph Boudoir. It's a photography studio specializing in intimate, elegant, and empowering boudoir and fantasy photography. And Stephanie has 17 years experience, even though she looks like she's 20. Um, in the illustration, <laughs> Stephanie has a keen eye for capturing the beauty and sensuality of her subjects in a tasteful and respectful manner. And Stephanie creates a comfortable, safe, and creative environment for her clients, allowing them to relax and be themselves in front of the camera. She believes that everyone should have the opportunity to feel confident and beautiful, and her photographs reflect this belief. Stephanie has photographed thousands of women. And boudoir photography is an art form that promotes inclusivity and encourages individuals of diverse shapes, sizes, abilities, and appearances to embrace their bodies with confidence and empowerment. And that's what we're here for, is to lift each other up and be empowered. So this is wonderful. Uh, Stephanie is an expert in all different styles, beauty portraits, glamour shots, fan fantasy photo shoots, retro pinup, and empowerment photography. A boudoir photo shoot invites you to see yourself in a different light and step into your power like never before. That's beautiful. What beautiful work. That's awesome. All about, you know, I think years ago people thought, you know, boudoir photography was like the pinup girl and everything, but you, you've taken it into a different light. And in fact, when I first heard about it, that's what my interpretation was, but it isn't. So after we finish this, it, everything, all the information for Stephanie will be listed below. And I just want to say that um, Stephanie, Stephanie's husband is Victor, our wonderful, um, our techie angel, as I call A little angel. He is our angel. <laughs> I don't know what we would do without him. Oh, my God. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Stephanie, we're so honored to have you as our guest today, you know. You know, our show is all about empowering uh, everyone, but what do you do? Oh my gosh. I mean, I love photography. I majored in it in college and to see what you're doing to lift people up. Uh, just, wow. I congratulate you on that. Uh, so tell us, how did you get started in this? Were you always a photographer and then this morphed in from there? Um, thank you so much. Uh, so I have always loved photography since I was a young child and have always been drawn to imagery and art. I grew up really loving fashion magazines. So in the 90s, which is when I was a teenager, um, I would look at, you know, Vogue magazine or Harper's Bazaar and just admire the the clothing, the hair and makeup, the posing but I never saw myself represented in those magazines. I mean, we all know what the classic supermodel looks like. You know, sure. they are six feet tall and willowy. Um, and I was, you know, I'm five, six and curvy. So um, back in the 90s, there weren't a lot of examples out there for how someone like myself could embody that feeling of being glamorous. Um, so I actually went through college. Um, I majored in English and writing. My, my goal was to become a book editor. Um, and I got an internship in, in 2002 in New York City at Paper Magazine. And this is when I was introduced to fashion photography up close. So I was an intern, so I got to run around and pick up clothing from designers and oh, make wow. sure that all of the catering was done. And I basically did a lot of grunt work in that job. Mm -hmm. But this was the first time that I got to see an actual photo shoot happen. And from there, I was so inspired. 
Um, and after I graduated college, I had some friends who did photography very casually, just amateur, you know, photography, and they would ask me to pose for them. I love to be photographed. I've always been a ham my entire life. Um, I have pictures of myself when I was a child where my mother did my makeup and put me on the table with a little dress on and had me do these different poses. So, um, so I've always enjoyed being photographed. Um, and then around 2007 is when I decided that I really wanted to run my own business. And after watching my friends who were photographers, you know, amateur photographers, I thought, you know what? I think I could do that. I think I can do this. I can learn photography. I can learn how to use a camera and, and try to understand lighting. And so I went back to community college and I took two semesters worth of classes. I took, you know, lighting one, Photoshop. I took um, a class on the business of photography. I learned how to use my camera the right way. Um, and then from there, I started law photography. So I started law photography in 2007. And initially, I was just very drawn to photographing women. I've always just loved the female form and found it to be so beautiful and inspiring. So some of my first um, photographs that I ever took are of my girlfriends in their underwear. <laughs> and this before, this is way before boudoir photography was even a genre. This is back when it was more known as pinup photography. Um, and that is really how I got my start was um, I wanted to see more representation in glamour photography. And I combined that with my desire to run my own business. And now here I am 17 years later, still loving what I do. Wow, that's amazing. That Thank is you. amazing. What a, and it's a gift. It's a gift to people. It is. So I know that you do a lot of work as far as the back, what you have to put together to have a session happen. Um, are the sessions individualized for each client? Um, I know you have different themes that you use in that, and or do the clients pick from like a standard, like a menu type of type of list? Yes. So everything I do is fully custom for my clients. So if somebody comes to me with an idea that they want to pull off, let's say they want to do like a photo shoot in a swimming pool and they want to have, you know, different colored lights and have it be really cinematic, then I can pull that off for them. Um, but I also have clients who come to me and they don't know what they want to do. They've never done anything like this before and they just want to feel beautiful. So in that case, I do have a menu that they can look at. I have many different sets and themes that people can choose from. And sometimes even that can be a little bit overwhelming for people. So I step them through the process by having conversation with them, asking them what they're drawn to, what their aesthetic is like. When they're looking at images, what do they like the most? And then I help them refine the vision and you know narrow down the options so that when we're doing the photo shoot, it feels like it is authentic for them and that it resonates with them. But usually people will come into the studio if they've never done this before and they will choose like a standard set. So a standard set would be something that, a set that always exists in the studio. I don't have to build it or break it down. Um, but then after they do their first photo shoot, they almost always wanna come back and do another one. And in that case, I have plenty of different themes and concepts for them to choose from. Interesting. You know, I was looking at some of the poses behind you, Stephanie. I think if I if I put myself in some of those positions, I might not get up. <laughs> you know, you made a good point. Um, you know, back in the day, you know, and Arlene, you you know this. Back in the '60s, what was the one model? Oh God, Twiggy. 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 So it's like and... even if you were five pounds overweight, you know, it's like we. That's I think that's it really messed us up psychologically. But I Absolutely. was wondering, Stephanie, do you find that, you know, most women find something wrong with their bodies in this day and age? Yes. Absolutely. I don't care if you're a supermodel, they find something wrong with themselves. People are very hard on themselves. And yeah. the society that we live in has really conditioned us to believe that we are not beautiful, that we are not good enough. Um, even, you know, I will have a stunning client walk through the door who has you know, who's a size two and 5'10", and it looks beautiful. Um, right. and, and she may hate the way she looks and have even like body dysmorphia. Some of my clients really fight with not being able to see themselves truly. And so that's where I come in. And I'm able to really work with them to make sure that we're capturing images that they feel comfortable doing, but then 
later they look back and they say, I look so beautiful here. I can't believe that's me. Um, and, you know, some clients may be self-conscious about, I, of course, the number one thing that people are self-conscious about is their midsection. That's very, very common. Yeah. Um, and so we have a lot of ways of working with that. Some people want to embrace it. They want to see it in the photos so that it makes it real for them. And it also helps them come to terms with their own image and how that's beautiful. It doesn't matter what size you are. Um, at some point, somebody told you that you weren't beautiful. They implied it. They said it straight to your face. Somebody yeah. called you a name or made comments about your size or your weight or the shape of your body. Um, and so we're always trying to unlearn that. We're trying to unpack that and unlearn it so that you can move forward. Maybe maybe people don't always get to the place of loving their parts of their bodies that they haven't loved in the past. But I think the goal that I try to encourage people to do or to reach is to just come, come to a neutral place about it. If you can just get to a neutral place about, you know, your midsection or your backside or, you know, some people get very specific, like, please only photograph me from the right side of my face because I really don't like the left side. Um, and those things are, I don't see that when I look at them, right? So to me, I try to gently push a little bit to make sure that um, not in a way that's going to make anybody uncomfortable, but in a way that's going to help them try to break through some of those self-limiting beliefs that have been really ingrained in all of us since we were children. Do you get, do you play music to get them in the, like? I do. Yes. Yeah, so I love music. Right. I love and, music. I know. Yeah. So I always ask, I have a questionnaire that I send to every client. And one of the first questions is, what is your favorite type of music or what is your favorite musician? And then when they arrive in the studio that day, I have that music playing for them so that they immediately feel um, at home and welcomed here. And then I have different playlists. So depending on the vibe of the photo shoot, I might choose something that's sexier or I might choose something that's a little bit more upbeat. Um, so I definitely use music as a way to connect with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing like music to get someone loose and just get them in the mood. It's so powerful. Absolutely. Do you, do you take photo shoots also for, um, you know, I know a big thing now is pregnancies. You know, I mean, I when Joanne and I, we went through our, we went fine, we were big moo-moos. No one wants to show their bodies at all, right, Joanne? Oh my God. Now, now it's like they pop Now out. they're wearing bikinis. Yeah. You know? it's all. I do maternity photography. In fact, um, I started doing maternity photography right away. So one of my very good friends at the time was pregnant when I started doing photography in, in community college. And so I asked her if I could photograph her. And that photo shoot was done on black and white film. I shoot all digital now, but when I first started, I shot on film. Nice. And they're still some of my favorite photos. And about five years into my career, um, I was contacted by a professional photographer magazine, and they actually ended up doing an entire feature on my maternity photography. So um, now, of course, um, it's easier to find a maternity photographer who isn't just going to have you posing in a field, looking down at your belly, like the very basic photos. Um, what I offer is is something more than that. Um, conceptual photography. I recently actually had a very good friend of mine who lives in Chicago. She flew out here to Connecticut to do her maternity session with me. And we used a projector. I projected these different shapes onto her body. And it was very avant-garde, very artsy. So whether somebody wants something a little bit more traditional or they want something really unique and artistic, then I work with them to bring that vision to life. Wow, that's cool. So if you want different themes, like you know, a fairy theme, like a mother daughter in a forest, can you set all that up? Absolutely, yeah. So actually one of the themes that I'm working on right now is called fairy tale. And so I'm working with a lot of the clients who are coming in are on the fairy tale like concept. So I helped them. I actually made some fairy wings recently, my first pair of fairy, I'm very crafty. So I love to make like headdresses and wings and you know different types of things that people can use. Um, so whether they want to look like an evil queen in a forest or, or if they want to look like a magical fairy, then I'm able to help them bring that to life too. I would do that in a heartbeat. I'm all about the fairies, right, Early? You know, Juliet. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. I would get my granddaughters and I'd be like, we'd have a field. It is so fun. It, it really oh, is such gosh. a fun process. Mm -hmm. Even for like a book cover design. Mm -hmm. 
Oh Absolutely. God, I've had a couple so of my images fun. be used for book covers in the past. Really? Oh my gosh. Yeah, her, her work is amazing. Um, do you do other types of photography? Like, do you ever get into doing the weddings, special events, or, um, or is it just strictly the boudoir? So when I first started, I kind of did a little bit of everything. Um, I wasn't really sure how to niche down at that point in my career. So I started off doing weddings and family photography. Really, I just love to photograph people. Um, but I've even done real estate photography in the past. Um, but in the years that I've been doing this, I've slowly narrowed everything down to where right now, 99% of what I do is um, boudoir or fantasy photography for women. I occasionally will do family portraits, but I don't advertise for that. I don't have a website up for that. So I don't I don't um, put that out into the world. But if you know me or I've done a photo shoot for you in the past, then you may reach out to me for your family photos. I do love photographing children. Um, I think there's something really magical about capturing their spirit. Um, I did my last wedding two years ago and I have no regrets. <laughs> I no longer photograph weddings anymore. So um, I've had people reach out to me about it, but I have um, had the pleasure of saying I, I no longer photograph weddings. It's uh, it's just, you know, not I, really what I'm you into. Have to deal, you have to deal with all the emotions and the bridezillas and everything and everybody else that wants their opinions done, I'm sure. Uh, that's, a know, that's a tough gig, weddings. Wedding photography is very challenging, and I feel like I'm, I'm so thankful that I've, I've never really had a true bridezilla, even in the hundreds of weddings that I've photographed. Um, but the problem that I, what I don't love about shooting weddings is that you're not just a portrait photographer, and that's what I excel at is portraits. Um, you're also an action photographer. You're a lifestyle photographer. You're a detail food photographer. You're getting, you know, you're getting every aspect of it. You can't control the light. You can't control where people stand for the most part, you know, during the ceremony and things like that. Um, it's very high pressure. So you literally have a split second to capture certain moments. And if you don't have the right focus and the right lighting in the exact right moment, then you miss yeah. that. You miss it. Um, and I just find that I love having my studio. I love being able to pose someone, tell them exactly how to you know, how to sit in the chair, where to put their hands, and then I design the lighting around them. So I have a lot more control over portrait photography. And this far into my career, that's, you know, that's really what I want is to be able to control the environment um, so that I can help provide the best experience for people. And even though I've, I've photographed some beautiful weddings and I'm very pleased that families will have, you know, those images to look back on for generations, it doesn't quite suit me anymore to do that. No. Outdoor lighting. Do you find, Stephanie, outdoor lighting is really harsh on the face? You see no, the I love light. shooting outdoors. So oh, you do? One of the things that sets me apart from other boudoir photographers is that I offer outdoor photo shoots. A mm -hmm. lot of photographers who do this genre will only shoot in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, but I have learned to really master lighting. So uh -huh. it doesn't really matter where it's at or what time of day. I can always work with the sun uh, to provide just really beautiful images for people. I prefer to shoot closer to sunset because you get that golden hour. You know, you're able to put people in open shade and create just a really beautiful, like glowy kind of image. But I actually just did a photo shoot a couple of days ago where we were outside around 5 p.m. And it wasn't quite golden hour, but the photos turned out gorgeous. They're absolutely beautiful. So I've had to challenge myself over the years of shooting in full sun and learning how to direct people so that it doesn't create, you know, the harsh shadows under the eye so it's not unflattering. Right. Um, so I, I feel pretty confident about about my lighting skills. Yeah. What's so really cool, cool Joanne, um, her pictures that I've seen, and I know her work a little bit, is she'll do some in a pool. When in her swimming pool? <laughs> I do. I have some a... Of your, some of your theory work, right? The ethereal? Mm -hmm. in yes. A pool. Like a mermaid? Like yeah, underwater? I have done mermaids. Yes, I've photographed mermaids both at the seaside and at the swimming pool. Ooh, um, so that I feel, as soon as we, so the, the where where my studio is at is inside of my home, which is an 1895 Victorian farmhouse, yeah. and there is a pool in the back. And as this, as soon as I walked onto the property and saw the pool, I thought, oh, I have to build a set here. Of course, I'm going to build a set here. So last summer, actually, I built a huge set. I call it Enchanted Waters. 
and I bring people there for a, it's very fantasy based. So they get into the water and then I have all of this lighting behind them. And um, it's, it's very beautiful. I use a lot of plants and a lot of um, backdrop kind of trickery to make it look like they're in the middle of the forest. Um, so and I use a smoke machine too, just to create that, you know, magical element. So yeah, I, I love working with the swimming pool. It's really fun. Do you have a special team that just does your hair and makeup or do you do that? Um, so I actually style hair pretty regularly for my clients because um, I, the team that I work with for hair and makeup, they are amazing. I have a few different hair and makeup artists that I work with, um, mm -hmm. but a lot of them, they're, they're mostly used to doing bridal hair and makeup. That's their sure. bread and butter. So when they come here, they get to do more fun looks, you know, more experimental looks, um, but they're not as comfortable doing vintage hair. So if a client comes in and she wants like a vintage victory rolls or victory rolls, yeah. something like that, then then I would be the one to style their hair because I have more experience with vintage styling than my hair and makeup artists do. But my team is incredible. I have the best people and everybody always loves the way they look when their hair and makeup is done. It's a big part of what we offer. Wow. I did the victory roll last for Halloween. <laughs> so much fun. It is. Yeah, it takes us back to those bombshell, you know, 1950s yeah. pinup days. That's fun. That is funny. Wow. So, Stephanie, do um do your clients, I'm sure they do, but do they get emotional when they see the final? You're Absolutely. When they're yes. older. I definitely have had, you know, many women who have shed tears during the process of seeing their images, happy tears. <laughs> um and I think it can be, it's its really, it can be life-changing for people. It really can change the way that they see themselves. Because when we're, when we see ourselves, you know, we're looking in a mirror, you know, or we maybe are looking down at our bodies. And so we don't always have the perspective that other people have when they look at us. And I'm able to use lighting and posing and theme and concept to create an image of them that they're not used to looking at. And sometimes that especially especially if they've never done a photo shoot before and they come in they they're nervous but they trust the process they let me do what I'm what I'm best at and then when they're looking at their images sometimes it's the first time they've ever felt beautiful in their whole lives and that could be a really powerful thing and can be very emotional for people so i always do my best to hold space for people and you know make sure that i'm available should they want to talk through it but sometimes when we're looking through their images and they're picking out their favorite ones, they just have tears, happy tears coming down. So I'm curious, Stephanie, if I were the photographer and you were the client, what would be your ideal surroundings? That's a great question. So I I do a lot of self-portrait. Um, so I like to show my clients, you know, that I also can be in front of the camera and have that vulnerability. Um, so I'm not sure because I've done a lot of self-portraits on my own sets and have fulfilled a lot of those, I guess, like my own photo shoot fantasies. So I don't know, maybe something in Paris. I I, I love Ooh. Paris. I, um, I've been there a couple of times, but I've never done a full-on photo shoot there. So I, I would want to do something that is in another location, somewhere magical that I really love. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, so definitely I'll have to call them. Go, we're going there next month. <laughs> Oh, oh wow! I'm so excited for you. That'll be I, really fun. I have to talk to you. Up to tell me some places. Absolutely. Really yeah, I like pictures. <laughs> yes. Arlene, what would be your ideal background? Oh my God! You so, could pick any background. That we call for me. Oh, what? <laughs> a restaurant, a bakery. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I think I would have to be in a fairy forest, houses mm -hmm. and hanging plants and. You know, the wreath around my head, like the goddess type. Oh, yeah. That's that would so be Joanny. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm very I'm close by. One of the things I love about the location of the studio is that I'm very close by to a beautiful forest. And then I'm also close by to the seaside. And I'm sort of right in between those places. So a lot of my fantasy clients will choose the forest. And spring, summer, fall, it is absolutely beautiful out there. Oh, that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. I just wish you lived closer. I would be doing uh, fairy <laughs> shots for sure. Clients travel to me pretty regularly. So really? mm -hmm, I do have people who fly here to create with me on a regular basis. So because I'm from Nashville and that's where I started my business back in 2007, a lot of my client base 
is is there in Nashville. And so I I used to travel back there and do photo shoots, but I'm doing that less and less because I'm becoming more established here in Connecticut and I really love creating in my studio. So um, on a regular basis, uh, at least a couple of times a month, people are traveling, flying in. Um, and then regionally, people drive in. Um, last night, my client was from Massachusetts. Um, I have people, last week, I had someone come from Pennsylvania. I have clients down in Maryland. A lot of people come in from New York City or New York State. So the travel part of this is is definitely something that I encourage people. If they, if they love what I do and, and they're drawn to my work and to me, then I'm happy to provide travel information for people. Oh, that's fun. So my question is, um, do you ever do mails? Oh, uh, that's a good question. So occasionally I will. Um, I don't specialize in that. So I usually make that pretty clear to people if they inquire. Um, I don't get a lot of inquiries from from men. The majority of people that I that I work with are, are definitely women or um, occasionally non-binary people will come to me. Right. But usually not a lot of men. Um, I am starting to photograph more couples. So that's something that I want to get more into doing over the next year. It's um, something I'm interested in doing more of. You know, I wanted to ask you, um, now this is going to be morbid, but has anybody contacted you that they know they're ill and they're going to be leaving soon and they want to do something in memorial for their family or they want to see themselves in a better light before they do do that final crossing? Have you yes. We had that. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. I've, had, I've had a few sessions like that. Um, and it's it's always such an honor. And it's very profound to me when someone chooses to capture their essence um, and their form, whether they have a terminal diagnosis, um, which is usually the situation if they've gotten a terminal diagnosis, then they or maybe they're going to be going through chemo and they want to capture before they lose their hair or before their body changes or before they have a, a mastectomy, a mastectomy. Um, or after I, I, I've actually um, I have a, a friend who has stage four breast cancer and um, she's in her 30s. She's lovely. We've known each other for over a decade. And after she had her um, her spacers taken out and her reconstructive surgery, she did a photo shoot with me to um, to honor that time in her life. And I, I'm really thankful for that. I've seen some really cool shots where they, you know, the um, the younger person in the family will be holding the grandmother's hand the weathered hand mm -hmm. and it's just a hand shot and it's just so profound it's very powerful i've actually had, i have done um a photo shoot with three generations of women um this was in i used to travel a lot and and, and do this i lived in denver colorado for five years and would travel mm -hmm. all over the country to do these photo shoots and i was in casper wyoming and had been brought in to do a photo shoot with a woman her mother and her grandmother and you know the hair and makeup very vintage style we got these beautiful portraits of the three of them together and then some of each of them separately and then i learned recently that her grandmother passed away and the um, one of the photos that i took of her was used at the funeral was used like framed and you know made large um as the the memorial image um which is of course such beautiful. an honor too. that's beautiful now i know that um at one point you were doing like you do events like weekends um i know halloween is one of your favorite and i know you did something in salem mass where you know you had a group of women come in and you would do the weekend um, are you still doing things like that um so that's on hold right now um i call that the wild witches retreat weekend and so the first year we her her name is madison hurley and she's a very good friend of mine and we love to work together she lives in arkansas so um, typically we will travel to a location and then host a weekend for people. Um, but this year, instead of hosting a full weekend, she and I are just traveling to New Orleans together in December and then offering photo shoots there. So we're not really um, offering a retreat weekend in the same way with where we provide food and a place to stay and, and all of that. And instead, we're just offering for people to travel there, have their own accommodations and then come and do their session with us. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if or when I'll get back to those full retreat weekends. To be perfectly honest with you, it is a lot of work and it is a lot of responsibility. Um, so I have found that um, I October is such a busy month for me, as you just mentioned, Arlene. I love Halloween and I build these big specialty sets around Halloween. So this year, my specialty set is called The Witch's Den. 
and I have a huge cauldron that lights up and has smoke coming out of it that they can pose in. Um, and so I love set building. And rather than travel and sort of take all of this time and energy and money, um, I'm just kind of deciding this year to stay put and to offer my services here in the studio. Oh, I just thought, Joey, had that question. You asked what would be mine? What would I want to be set up in? And you, you said the area and the outside. Well, of course, what would mine be? Angels. 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 Have to be ethereal. And You're sitting on a cloud. Angelic with all. I do have a cloud set. I have a cloud set. <laughs> I have a cloud set. Yeah. Cloud set. I do. It's called Dreamlight. My wings out. Well, yes, we could get you some hey, wings. Well. And a halo. Well, I placed you up on a... <laughs> oh, God. Have you swinging <laughs> from some cables? That'd be funny. <laughs> oh my god! So Stephanie, what has been your biggest challenge in all of this? That's a very good question. I think just being in business for seventeen years, seeing you know, I started my business in a recession, um, and then I've seen a lot of economic ups and downs over the years, and I think. The hardest part of this is just, you know, marketing, <laughs> making sure that people know that I exist, um, getting the word out, whether it is paid advertising or referral program or in-person networking. It's never ending, of course, the marketing side of this, the business side. Um, the photography side that I love and that I'm so passionate about is really only about 30% of what I do. The rest of what I do is um, is marketing and running the business side of things. So I would say that getting clients in the door is the biggest challenge. Um, luckily, now that I've been here in Connecticut for three years, it's starting to snowball, which is what you want. You want that snowball effect. I'm, I'm starting to get repeat clients. In fact, right now I have a client who has three sessions coming up with me over the next six months. Um, so repeat clients uh, will come back and book and then they tell their friends and their friends. And that's really, really helpful. Um, I also would say that, you know, moving to a new state and a new region where I didn't know anyone and starting my business from scratch here was very challenging. Um, and that during that time, I really had to travel to other places to make enough income. Um, and, and that that I look back three years ago and I think to myself, like, what was I thinking? I can't, I can't believe that I had, you know, the the guts to to do something so bold. But I'm really glad that I did because I love it here in Connecticut. Um, so, yeah, I would say, you know, marketing, getting clients, making sure people know who I am. That is the biggest challenge. Were there times that you want to throw your hands up and say that? Absolutely. Yes. Many I times. A, I think that's a common factor in business. It is. When I remember when I started my um, my shop, it was the same thing. I know it just went with nothing. And uh, there were days I was crying that I said, what am I doing here? I'm crazy. I'm going to close the door. I'm running away. I'm leaving it. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yes. I think every I, businesswoman goes through that. Absolutely. And theater. when when you learn that there are ups and downs of business and you learn to ride that uncertainty, because I think that any, any career is going to have um, ups and downs or pluses and minuses. If you have a corporate job, then you're required to be there nine to five, Monday through Friday, you know, you maybe have probably have a boss telling you what to do. You have to deal with, you know, coworkers, um, but you have the security, you have insurance, you have vacation, paid vacation. So there are there are perks to that. Whereas when you run your own business, you can make your own schedule for the most part. You're your own boss, so you don't really have anyone telling you what to do. Um, but you don't have the security, you don't have the insurance, you don't have the paid vacation. So it's all up to you. But I've found, I think just from doing this as long as I have, that there are going to be feast and famine times. And I've learned to prepare for that and to save and make sure that when I'm in, you know, a feast mode where I'm, I'm creating a lot and my earnings are up and I save save that so that when I'm in a famine mode, I, I can use that you know money to to get by. But I also find and I think that you'll really love this, especially knowing what your podcast is about, is that I really just have to trust I have to trust exactly. that everything is working out for me at all times. Even when I have a setback, I I have to remind myself that it's okay. This is still working out for my best interest at any given moment. And that is a scary thing because you're hanging over the abyss with no safety net and you have to just trust that the rope is going to hold you. 
Um, and I find that the more I do that, the better I get at doing it. It's like a it's like a muscle that you build. The more practice you get, the easier it becomes. And there was even a time whenever we were living in Denver and I was trying to get a real job, a real job. <laughs> Not that running this business isn't a real job, but you, you know what I mean. I was trying to get a job where yeah, I didn't have to worry about, you know, the feast and the famine and, and finding clients and all of that. And I tried so hard. I put together a beautiful resume. Um, I applied for so many different jobs. I was applying for jobs in different parts of the country because I thought I'll move if I find a really good position somewhere. I have a lot of experience. Surely someone will want to hire me. And I no nothing. No bites. I spent months, and this happened more than once, where I tried to go into the workforce and actually get employment, and I was not able to find it. Um, I mean, I have a, a bachelor's degree. I have, you know, 20 years of experience at copywriting, and I'm, you know, I'm able to, I have sales ability. I, I have a lot of different skills, but for whatever reason, the universe did not provide those opportunities for me, and I had to, I had to really come to terms with the fact that this is what I'm meant to do even when it gets hard, even when it seems impossible, even when I don't know where my next client is coming from. Um, thankfully, I'm not in that space right now, but I have been many times in the past and I have to just trust. I have to trust. And of course, I have to work hard <laughs> too. I can't just trust that it's going to happen and then it, it happens. I have to put the work in. Um, I've had to you know, reinvent my business over and over again to match with the changing times to understand how social media affects my business and to get to know that and learn it. Um, ads, learning how to do ads, understanding Google and web design, all the things that go into it. I have to learn those things. But luck luckily, I'm really passionate and I'm also really stubborn. <laughs> so if I hit a roadblock, then then clearly I just have to work harder um, and work smarter. And uh, I just have that sort of personality that digs in and I refuse to give up. So. Um, so it brings me to where I am now, even though I have wanted to try to have a, a little bit of an easier life with, um, with my career. It's not meant to be, this is, this is what I'm meant to be doing. No, it'll get, it'll, it'll start flowing better in these, right. I, I believe. And, but oh, you yeah. made a valid point. It's thought, word, and action. I think most of society, most of us live in thought and word. We'll think of something creative, whatever, we'll speak about it. But then we fall short of doing the action part. Exactly. Go out there and do that. I mean, you even got when, you know, when I was looking for a relationship and, you know, and I started on the dating sites, at first I was just doing it like, haha, whatever, you know. But when I really defined what I wanted in my life and what I wanted to create, it was a job. It was a job. And I had to do the action part. And I mean, I made it like a business that I was going out there and putting myself out there, you know, it's being very vulnerable. But mm -hmm. um, what you're talking about, everything that you do is is wonderful. It's empowerment for for the women. Well, for all of us, you know, it is about being in balance. Everything it, you touched upon, exactly. right? Absolutely, yes. And I've gone through times in my life and in my career where I've been out of balance. And balance, I, it's something we always strive for. It's very hard to achieve true balance, but I'm always striving for that. I'm always trying to make sure that I have balance between my personal life and my career, making sure that I have time for myself to take care of myself, to take care of my family. Um, and without that balance, if you're in tune with yourself and you've done a lot of internal work, whether it's through therapy or meditation or um, you know, whatever your approach is, if you've done a lot of that inner work on yourself, then you know when you're out of balance. You can feel it. You know that something is out of whack. Um, and then working to to get in, back into balance is is a process. So uh, all of it is a is an exercise, you know, like it, there's no perfect place that you reach. You just keep trying every day and have grace for ourselves too. you know, try to be kind to ourselves when we can. Mm -hmm. Well, those are all excellent points. Stephanie, yeah. if you could, what advice would you have for the women out there who really don't feel in balance with their own bodies? They're embarrassed for their own bodies. And you've seen hundreds of, I'm sure, if not thousands. What advice would you give to someone who doesn't feel comfortable in their own skin? Yes. I would say the first thing that we can do is change how we speak to ourselves in our own minds. Yeah, that is yeah. such an important thing. 
And I, I'm not, I didn't create this uh, concept, but I've heard it many times, which is the way that you speak to yourself in your mind. Would you speak to your friend that way? Would you speak to if would you tell a friend that they're ugly or that they they don't look good in in a dress or an outfit that they're wearing? You would never say that. You would be kinder. And so I think it's important to speak kinder to yourself. And that doesn't have to, you don't have to go from I hate myself to I love myself. There is a huge gap between those two places. And that's why I think that coming to a neutral place is more attainable for people. So you might not say, you know, I love my body, <clears throat> but you can maybe just say, I'm okay with my body. I'm, I, the body exists. It is here. I'm not going to love it. Maybe I can't love it yet, but I'm also not going to hate it. Um, so I think speaking kinder to ourselves is really the crucial first step of this. Um, but if you're not able to get there, then absolutely doing inner work like ther therapy has been so helpful for me. Um, I've been in some form of therapy, you know, for the better part of 25 years, and it's really helped me overcome a lot of my own inner dialogue that has been very damaging, you know, just from childhood and, and the things that we learn to say to right. ourselves. We punish ourselves more than anyone ever will. Um, so when you can sort of get a hold of that and start to change that narrative, whether it's through affirmations. I love affirmations. I say my affirmations okay. all of the time. Even when you don't believe it, just keep telling yourself your affirmations, whatever that needs to be for you. You know, I am healthy. I am loved. I am, you know, I like to, I like to think about myself in terms of f like my function too. So instead of thinking about how my body looks, I think about how it works, right? If I'm able to walk my dog around the neighborhood, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Am I able to do this action? Um, of course, that's, it's not limited to that. Some people have different abilities or maybe unable to walk. Um, but I think about rather than how I look, I think about how I feel and I think about how that's the a great, that's a wonderful point. And you're a young person. I want and I, this message is for the young ones out there because you think you're you'll never this won't happen to you or whatever. But as Joanne and I know, as we're getting older, oh, my Lord, you're just so grateful to be able to be vertical and get up out of bed and to be able to breathe and to see and to embrace everything that's out there. Because as you start getting different ills that happen to you, you're like, oh, my Lord, I took this for granted for so many years that I can't hold this or I can't open this or, you know, right, Joanne? Oh, yeah. It's like, Oh, you're grateful for every, every little thinking? thing. But when we're young, we all think about that. We think we're invincible and this is going to go right. on this way forever. So be grateful, be grateful for, and and you're in the right place, made a very valid, valid point. So yeah, those were all excellent points, Stephanie. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was just going to say, um, I lost my mother to brain cancer when I was 28. And I spent the majority of my 20s caring for her. And um, she also had multiple sclerosis. So she she had a couple of really challenging, of course, you know, one of them was terminal illnesses. And I watched her over time lose her abilities. And not only her physical abilities, but her cognitive abilities, her abilities to speak, her ability to communicate, her ability to express herself. And bearing witness to that was very difficult for me. But it also gave me so much perspective. It gave me so much perspective on what to value. Mm -hmm. And that has been a really, you know, crucial part of what's made me, you know, what the experiences that have made me who I am today. Beautiful. That's beautifully said. Well, wow. this has been wonderful. Yeah, our time is rolling around here because Victor will be telling us. I do. <laughs> So I want to thank you again for for being with us and sharing everything and really shedding the light on the work that you do because a lot of times people out there have a different connotation of what um, your specific type of photography is about and that and it's um, this is so to put the light on it as far as empowering women to seeing ourselves in our best light to bring ourselves forward to shine the light on each other to bring you're bringing that out in people and that's what we're here for that's what right. Our stations about is to lift each other up and shine our lights on each other. So, Lily, thank you so much for having me. This has been really fun and really an honor to connect with both of you.
Uh, oh, thank you so much, Stephanie. And good luck with everything in the future. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for um, that's watching us with their eyes or hearing us on the podcast. And as always, I say, get out of here, get out of your, your head space for those that don't see us and get into your heart. And it's all about love and be the beautiful beacons of light that you are and shine it out there. Because the sweet, each and every one of us needs us. The planet needs it. The entire universe is needed. We're all connected as one in one source. Thank you, yeah. beautiful co-host. Thank you, my beautiful. Thank you, Arlene. Love you. Thank you. And we will have all of Stephanie's information listed below. And as always, please subscribe. We have a nice, beautiful new button that Victor's created for us to hit on to subscribe. And also leave comments. Let us know what you think and what you would like to hear about. And um, and share it with your friends. Share it and spread it. We need this to spread yes, out. We need we to want, get this out to the world. To grow. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks so much, everyone. Love Thanks, ladies. Love you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.